In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear children, friends of Jesus, you're welcome to this program, your program on Uganda Catholic Television, Good News for All. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent in year A, and it is a joy that we are moving together in these 40 days of Lent where Jesus is in the desert fasting and praying. My name is Dorothy Atire Sonko. Children, let us humble ourselves and we pray. Remember to put off all the distractions, please. Make sure that you're in a quiet place. So, humble yourself and we pray. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. My Bible tells me so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of power and glory, we give thanks to you for the wonderful gift of sight. Open our eyes to the good things in this world. Help us also to see when things are wrong and what we can do to change them. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Children, in the previous weeks, we have been talking about Lent and the pillars of Lent. We talked about um, the pillar of praying. We talked about the pillar of fasting. And we also talked about the pillar of almsgiving. And slowly, we are getting to the conclusion of the 40 days. Friends, have you been practicing those pillars? Have you shared anything with someone in need? Have you prayed? Have you fasted? And are you trying to, to get into a deeper relationship? Are you trying to get in, you know, closer to Jesus and trying to do good things? I hope you are. Myself, I'm trying. Please, let's try together. And a special prayer that I would like to encourage ourselves so much to do as we conclude this Lenten season, waiting for Palm Sunday, then the whole week, then the Easter time, the prayer of the way of the cross, trying to understand that complete journey, the passion of Jesus, what Jesus went through. I believe some of us have been praying the way of the cross every Friday in our parishes, in our schools, in our communities. And I congratulate you and I encourage you, please keep praying. Keep praying with that prayer, the way of the cross, all the stations of the cross, where we get in the real footsteps of Jesus' suffering. Whatever he went through, whenever we are praying that prayer, we also share in that. We are able to understand the pain, the rejection, the, the beatings, the sweating that he went through. You know, the crowning with thorns, all the pain in the head, the sweating of blood, everything. We are able to share in it. And in sharing in the passion of Jesus Christ, it also it enables us to have a deeper relationship, a closer relationship with Jesus. So dear children, friends of Jesus, as we look forward you know, into the conclusion of Lent, let us intensify our prayer, more so praying the stations of the cross or the way of the cross. <laughs> Speak to us, dear. 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he should be born blind? Neither he nor his parents sinned. Jesus answered, He was born blind so that the works of God might be revealed in him. As long as they last, we must carry out the work of the one who sent me. The night will soon be here when no one can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spat on the ground, made a paste with the spittle, put this over the eyes of the blind man, and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Silu. This name means one who has been saved. So he went off and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and the people who used to see him, for he, for he was a beggar, said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, Yes, it is the same one. Others said, No, but he just looks like him. The man himself said, Yes, I am the one. So they said to him, Then how is it that your eyes were open? He answered, The man called Jesus made a pest, dabbed my eyes with it and said to me, Go off and wash at Silu. So I went, and, I, and when I washed, I gained my sight. They asked, Where is he? They, he answered, I don't know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been born blind. It had been a supper day when Jesus made a paste and opened the man's eyes. So when the Pharisees asked him how he had gained his sight, he said, He put a paste on my eyes, I washed my face, and I can see. Then some of the Pharisees said, That man cannot be from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a sinner produce signs like this? And there was a division among them. So they spoke to the blind man again. What have, you, what have you said about him now that he has opened your eyes? The man answered, He is a prophet. However, the Jews would not believe that the man had been blind without first sending for the parents of the man who had gained his sight and asking them, Is this the man really the son of yours who you say was born blind? If so, how is it that he is now able to see? His parents answered, We know he is our son, and we know he was born blind. But how? But we don't know. But how he can see? We don't know. Nor who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is old enough. Let him speak for himself. His parents spoke like this out of fear of the Jews who had already agreed to ban from the synagogue anyone who should acknowledge Jesus as the Christ. This was why his parents said, He is old enough, ask him. So the Jews sent for the man again and said to him, Give glory to God. We are satisfied that this man is a sinner. And now I can see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He replied, I have told you once and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it all again? 
do you want to become his disciples yourself? At this, they heard abused at him. It is you who are his disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man replied, that is just what is so amazing. You don't know where he comes from, and he has opened your eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but God does listen to people who are devout and do his will. Ever since the world began, it is unheard of anyone to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not for God, he wouldn't have been able to do anything. They retorted, and you are trying to teach us, and you ask, and you are sinner through and through ever since you were born, and they ejected him. Jesus heard they had ejected him. When he found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Sir, the man replied, Tell me who he is, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have already seen him. He is speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe, and worshipped him. Jesus said, It is for judgment that I have come into this world so that those without sight may see and those with sight may become blind. Hearing this, some Pharisees who were present said to him, So, we are blind, are we? Jesus replied, If you were blind, you would not be guilty, but since you say we can see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear children, you have had the long story, the very beautiful story, how Jesus shows his power, how he shows his mercy, how he shows his love, how he shows his kindness to someone who was born blind. Have you ever seen a blind person? Have you ever heard about someone being blind? We have some people in this world, some who are born blind, others become blind because of accidents, others fall sick and become blind. The same thing like children. For example, some children who suffer from measles, uh, some of them end up being blind if it is not well treated. And imagine someone knowing that they cannot see anything and they are trying to live a normal life just like any other person. Now, let's imagine this person who is very old, a very old man who has lived all his life not being able to see anything. You're lucky you can see your parents you can see your friends, you can, you can see your books, you can study well, uh, you can cross the street, you can go to fetch water, you can hand over something to someone that you know, you can clean your bedroom, you can clean your house, you can do housework. But this man did not have any opportunity in his life to see what he was doing. Maybe he could have tried you know, to maybe take care of himself, make sure that he bathes, he clothes himself up, he feeds himself. But these other extra things, like housework and what, it could have been difficult for him. But here is the joy that comes, that Jesus meets this man and he helps him to see again. What a joy. What a joy. Imagine seeing your uncle or your big brother who has been blind for a very long time, seeing you, looking at your face and smiling. Just imagine that joy. Just imagine that, that feeling that 
everyone gets about uh, someone being able to see again. That is the same joy that, that the parents had. The parents were very happy, but they were very scared also, you know, to acknowledge that maybe they had an idea of Jesus, because during that time, uh, people didn't want to hear about Jesus. They only knew that it was only them as uh, the religious people of that time who had monopoly of God, who would only have that attachment, that closeness to God, but not any other person. But Jesus came so that all of us, all of us can have that relationship with God. And Jesus says that when, when they started asking, could it be because of his sins? Could it be because of the sins of the parents? Jesus says that he is not blind because of his sins or his parents, but because God's power has to be seen in him. The power of God has to work in him, in the blind person. What does this mean for us, dear children? Imagine some of us go through different experiences in life. Maybe we are not having the best of what we wish to have. Maybe our parents are struggling to get for us some things. Uh, we don't have the school fees. We don't have enough food. And also maybe we wish to have better clothing. We wish to have better houses. We wish to, basically we wish to have something better. Let's say that we, we have some small blindness in some areas of our lives. But Jesus is telling us something that whatever blindness that we have, let us not be hard on ourselves, but instead let us accept everything as God's way to show his power. God's way to show his love. God's way to show his mercy. God's way to show his might. So dear children, whatever we are going through, any unfortunate situation that we could be going through, let us accept it as God's way to show that he loves us, he cares for us, and it is all for his glory, the glory of his name. So children, for this week, as we get closer to the end of the 40 days of uh, Lent, let us keep more in prayer. Let us get deeper into fasting. Remember, fasting from those small, small bad manners that we do, not those bad words that we use, you know, that disrespect that we have. Let us try to be more, more free, more, more loving, more empathetic, more respectful, so that we are able also to share in the special graces that come with this season of Lent. And when Lent is done and we are to celebrate Easter, we shall really know that it has been worth it. We shall know that it's been such a joy to, you know, to be with Jesus in the desert because we shall not be the same again. God is going to bless us. God is giving us beautiful things. And God is assuring us that he loves us. And children, whatever we have to do, let us not do it for only ourselves, but also for others. Let's think about the other children in the world who are suffering, who are looking for food, who don't have where to sleep. Now it's even a rainy season. Floods are very, they, they, are, they are becoming rampant. Let us pray that God really makes it possible for every child in this world to have the provision of their basic needs. That's for Parents to find out how Jesus gave him his sight. 
The man tells them that they do not believe it and grow angry. Jesus tells the Pharisees that they are blind because they cannot see that he is the Son of God. While there is nothing wrong with their eyes, the Pharisees do not open their hearts to see the truth of who Jesus is. While the blind man is able to see and to believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God. God, God, God has given us five senses to learn about the world that is around us. Do you know what the senses are? We, we can see all the beautiful and wonderful things that God has created, like birds, trees, flowers, fish, family, and friends. We can hear lovely music and birds singing. We can smell flowers, love seeds, and grass when it has just been cut. We can taste yummy food and drink. We can feel the sun warm on our skin. The soft fur of our pet when we stroke it, and the hands of our friends when we do a high five. Have you shown me some of the other people's knowledge that you have seen, had, smelled, tested, or felt today? But we also need Jesus to help us to see the truth about the world around us and how we should treat one another. As well as our five senses, we need to open our hearts to others so that we can reach out to them when they need us. Sometimes there are problems or things that are not right in this world. We can take notice of these problems and try to make them better. We can see that it is not fair for some people in the world to have lots of money, power and things, while others of us are poor or hungry or do not have a safe place to live. We can see that we are damaging our planet and the climate is changing. Floods, droughts, and natural disasters are happening more often and affecting more people around the world. God calls us to use our gifts and not to ignore what the problems that we see. We can try instead to make a difference to care for our earth and the people who are poor, to, to change their lives for the better. Look, Look out for all the good things that you have seen in this world this week. If you see anything that is wrong or unfair, think about what you can do to help to change it. Hallelujah! 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 Son of God. Our memory verse, dear children, is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 9. Verse 3, he is blind so that God's power might be seen at work in him. He is blind so that God's power might be seen at work in him. Surely children, God's power will be seen at work in us. Let us always try to be close to Jesus. God be
let's have our prayer intentions god of love thank you for your might and power thank you for your love and mercy that always heals us from whatever we are suffering from may you give us the holy spirit always enable us be close to you and more so to your son jesus christ our friend Thank you, dear children, for praying. Thank you for being part of the program. And thank you for faithfully participating in the activities of LED. We have prayed together. We have been fasting. And we are also trying to do acts of charity, looking out for those in need. 
and sharing the love of Jesus with them. Thank you, our dear parents, for bringing the children to be part of the program. Thank you, the liturgy teachers out there, for making this program very beautiful with your contribution, with your ideas. And to you, our priests, thank you for all the guidance that you give us that makes this program better and better. Children, keep watching Uganda Catholic Television, Good News for All. And always, you're welcome to participate in this program. All your beautiful ideas are welcome. And together, let us keep building this family of faith, prayer, and charity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bye-bye, dear children. Keep watching Uganda Catholic Television. Good news for all.